Hejsan alle sammen. Dagens webinar skal handle om community colleges og studiemuligheter i USA. Så i dag så har vi med oss representanter fra Fertiliansa Community Colleges og Green River College. Så webinaret i dag tar cirka en time med spørsmål helt til slutt. Så hvis dere kan skrive spørsmål på engelsk i chatten, så hadde det vært supert. Dere kan enten sende de privat til meg hvis dere ikke vil dele det med andre, eller så kan dere sende offentlig. Først skal jeg gå gjennom en kort introduksjon om hva Tone driver med, hva vi kan hjelpe med, hvem litt om meg og så videre. Deretter skal vi gå gjennom ofte stilte spørsmål. Deretter litt om community colleges og noen fordeler med det. Og så er det klart for høydepunktet, det er presentasjonene fra skolene som jeg nevnte. Så helt til sist skal vi ha en liten Q&A. Da kan dere stille de spørsmålene som dere lurer på, og egentlig få svare på de. Så det kan hende at det er noen av dere som allerede har vært i kontakt med Sonor og har sett på noen webinarer, men for dere som ikke vet helt hva vi driver med, så har vi kort beskrevet en gjeng med tidligere utenlandsstudenter som nå jobber med å hjelpe norske elever med å støtte til studier i utlandet. Våre studieveiledere har studert i blant annet Storbritannia, USA, Australia, Mexico og Nederland, som er andre ord. Vi kan gi de beste tipsene og dele veldig mye av våre erfaringer. Vi har alle sammen, ja, vi har sammen... Vi har samarbeid med universiteter i fem engelskspråklige land. USA, Storbritannia, Singapore, Australia og New Zealand. Men vi hjelper også med opptak til medisin- og tannlegestudier i Sentraleuropa. Så vi hjelper egentlig med å finne ditt drømmeuniversitet basert på dine ønsker og din bakgrunn. Og all hjelp som du får av oss er alltid gratis og uforpliktende. Så du får blant annet utført en personlig veileder som kan hjelpe deg med valg av universitet og grad, alt som innegår i selve søknaden, stipender og alt annet økonomisk, og alt det som er med praktisk informasjon før avreise, det vil si det som går på lånekassen, visum, bolig og så videre. Så jeg tenkte egentlig også å fortelle litt kort om meg selv. Jeg har jo alltid elsket USA, og min fascinasjon med USA begynte i veldig tidlig alder, da jeg egentlig var fast bestemt på at jeg bare måtte flytte til USA. Så min første tur til USA var i andre klasse på videregående. Da dro jeg faktisk på utveksling til et år i Montana. Så etter at jeg besøkte vertsøsteren min, som jeg bodde hos da i et år, og besøkte henne da på college, så visste jeg at jeg også hadde veldig lyst til å se på college i USA. Jeg elsket egentlig følelsen som jeg fikk da av frihet, hvor gøy det virket å bo i sånn typisk dorms. Og alle som jeg snakket med følte en slik school pride, eller stolthet over skolen som de gikk på. Så med en gang jeg kom hjem fra den turen, så kontaktet jeg Sonor. Så jeg fikk hjelp av de til å søke meg inn på et universitet, som hadde egentlig alt det som jeg var ute etter på et tidspunkt. Eastern Connecticut State University, der jeg tok en double major, sånn som vi heter. Vi skal gå litt nærmere inn på det, i sosiologi og kriminologi. Så etter det så bestemte jeg meg for at jeg hadde lyst til å prøve noe helt nytt. Og da ble det en ettårig mastergrad i Storbritannia, og turen gikk da til University of Bristol, som også er et av våre samarbeidsuniversiteter. Så jeg kan jo også gå gjennom det noen ofte stilte spørsmål som vi får. Noen lurer på om man får støtte av lånekassen til studier i utlandet, og da er svaret ganske enkelt ja. Lånekassen støtter alle våre samarbeidsuniversiteter, og det gjelder også disse community college-ene som dere skal ha snakke mer med etterpå. Dette går jo også over til dette med pris, da det ikke er noe sånn lett å fastslå da dette er fra hva du skal betale, da det varierer veldig ut fra hvor lang grad du tar, hva slags grad du tar, og universitetet du ender opp med å begynne på. Så da er spørsmålet går på dette med språktest, og om det er nødvendig. Fire eller bedre engelsk gir ofte fritak for engelstest, selv om det er noen universiteter som krever dette allikevel på sine søkere. Så det siste spørsmålet handler da om det er noen spesifikke frister, og da er svaret at disse varierer egentlig litt fra universitet til universitet. Så det kan være greit å bare høre om dette egentlig relativt tidlig i prosessen da. Ja, nå i disse koronatider så er det jo også naturlig at man har litt spørsmål rundt dette om reise og så videre. Og sånn som ting ser ut nå, så er det mulig å reise til Storbritannia, Singapore, USA og EU-land, selv om det er mange universiteter som akkurat nå har nettundervisning. Per dagsdato er grensene til både Australia og New Zealand stengt, men 
Det er mulig å utsette studiestarten sin, eller man kan også starte online. Så nå over til dagens tema, nemlig Community College. I USA så har de faktisk over 900 Community Colleges i alle statene, så det er ganske mye å velge mellom. Det kommer litt an på hvor man vil. Men det første jeg skal snakke om er oppbyggingen av en amerikansk grad, noe som er veldig viktig å forstå når vi skal snakke mer om Community College. En amerikansk bachelorgrad er fireårig, mens en mastergrad er toårig. Men ved noen universiteter så er det derimot mulighet for å fullføre en bachelorgrad på tre år. På bachelornivå så er de to første årene veldig fleksible, hvor du kan utforske og velge blant en del ulike fag, noe som ofte blir kalt general requirements. General requirements består ofte av en del generelle fag som er i typ bulker, hvis det er mening. For eksempel må man ta et typ språkfag, et helserelatert fag, mattefag og et typ naturfag. Så i mitt tilfelle så valgte jeg for eksempel å ta astronomi for å følge den naturfagskvoten. Det er også verdt å nevne at disse general requirements fagene er introduksjonsfag som regel. Så det vil si at du skal ikke, vi er virkelig stresset så mye at du skal studere superavansert kjemi når du kanskje i utgangspunktet er ute etter en grad i historie. Så ja, de to siste årene av bachelorgraden består jo av selve hovedspesialiseringen. Det er du virkelig går i dybden på ditt fagområde, det vil si det du tar bachelorgrad i. Dette er basert på en oppbygning som blir kalt liberal arts, som fokuserer på at man skal få bredt med kunnskap i løpet av graden sin, og vi rett og slett vite litt om mye, i tillegg til graden du selvfølgelig vil ta, eller i tillegg til fagområdet du vil ta bachelorgraden din i. Så fag du tar bachelorgraden din i blir ofte kalt major, det kommer du kanskje til å høre mer om etterpå, noe som betyr hovedspesialisering, mens en minor betyr underspesialisering. Sånn som jeg tok jo en double major i sosiologi og kriminologi, da tok jeg to hovedspesialiseringer. Så de to typer vanligste bachelorgrader man tar i USA er en Bachelor of Arts, som betyr en samfunnsfaglig grad, det vil si for eksempel en grad i statenvidenskap, sosiologi og så videre, mens en Bachelor of Science er ofte en mer realfaglig grad, det vil si at man tar ofte en grad som kjemi, biologi innenfor IT og så videre. Og det er egentlig her de første to årene med Community College kommer inn i bildet. Mange velger å gå de første to årene på et community college for å unna gjøre disse generelle eller typ lettere fagene. Og deretter overføre til et annet universitet. Så denne type transfer skal universitetene gå, som er med i dag, gå litt nærmere inn på. Hvordan det fungerer rent praktisk sett og hva som egentlig er mulig, så stay tuned. Men ja, etter to år ved community college så får man som regel en grad i noe som heter associate, det vil si en associate grad, som er en grad som egentlig ikke eksisterer i Norge, men som kan hjelpe deg med overføring til et annet universitet i USA etter disse to årene. Så hva er egentlig fordelene med Community College, lurer du kanskje på, og hvorfor er det så mange som velger dette? Det skal du få svar på nå. De siste årene har kostnadene for høyere utdanning i USA økt, og det er veldig mange nyutdannende som sitter med masse i studielån, Community College er et godt alternativ med lavere skolepenger. Det er ofte fordi de har offentlige skoler som er støttet av staten. Du kan derfor spare veldig mye penger i lengden hvis du studerer på et sted hvor skolepengene ligger på 10 000 dollar i året, kontra 19 000 dollar og til og med opp til 60 000 dollar for noen av disse eliteuniversitetene, hvis man kan si det sånn. Så ofte så er det jo også høye opptakskrav til universiteter i USA, og det er mange som ikke kommer inn på sitt første valg. Derfor har Community College blitt mer populær blant både amerikanske og internasjonale studenter. Søker du deg inn på et Community College og tar to år der, trenger du heller ikke å bekymre deg for at hvis du ikke har de beste karakterene rett og slett. Mange Community College godtar studenter med et snitt på rundt 3,0. Ja, selv om du ikke kanskje kom inn på drømmeskolen din, så kan Community College også tilrettelegge for akkurat dette, og egentlig hjelpe deg med overføring til ditt drømmeuniversitet. Så etter to år på Community College, så oppnår man jo det som jeg nevnte, associate degree, eller ja, og kan da bli overført til ditt drømmeuniversitet. Da har du tatt de to siste årene som på en måte hovedspesialiseringen din, hvis det er i bening. Og da blir ofte søvnadsprosessen lettere. Ingen studiepoeng blir borte, eller at du må ta noe på nytt. Alt er på en måte veldig tilrettelagt for å egentlig hele studieløpet ditt. 
Så vanligtvis är er ju klasserna på Community College också mycket mindre än på dessa stora universiteten. Det betyder att studenterna får mycket mer uppföljning under väg i studielöpet. Detta med att det är er lite mindre, det går också över till detta med vänner. Det kan vara utmanande för någon, eh speciellt internationella studenter och starta på ett universitet för det är er många 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 tusen studenter och man kan uppleva att man drog kanske drukter egentligen lite i mängden. Det kan egentligen därför vara lite lättare att starta på Community College för det de ofta är er ett sätt mindre och det är er mer en sån klassrumkänsla. I tillägg till detta så får man ju också möjligheten att uppleva två destinationer. Det vill säga si de två första åren på Community College och de två sista på ett annat sätt. USA är er ett väldigt stort land och över transfer så kan man faktiskt få uppleva många kulturer och stater. Alla alla staterna har ju egentligen något kul att tillby och i tillägg till det så får du också utvidgat nätverket ditt. Så varför inte? Det kunde jag. Så vi samarbetar ju med community colleges på västkusten i USA, var det er tre i California och en i Washington. Så är er då ja, ska se, ett där, ett där och två där. So now we're moving on to the presentation. So first out is Jennifer from Hildeonsa Community Colleges. Jennifer, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, let me just share my screen. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's morning here in California. I'm so happy that you're joining us, all of us today, um, to learn more about community colleges and what they offer. I know you just got a lot of very comprehensive information about how the transfer process works and some of the benefits of community colleges. I'm going to dive into what that looks like in California and at Foothill in De Anza and some of the reasons why you may want to consider studying here in Silicon Valley for at least two years. Um, my name again is Jennifer Brook. I'm the Director of International Recruitment and Marketing for Foothill in De Anza and Foothill in De Anza are actually two community college campuses. Um, they are located about 10 minutes apart. Foothill College is located in a small community called Los Altos Hills but it's very close to Stanford University and Google's headquarters. De Anza College is a larger campus and I'll, I'll talk more about the differences in a little bit. Um, and it's located in Cupertino, California, which you may have heard of if you have any Apple products because that's where Apple's headquarters is located. Um, on the slide here, we have two colleges, two years, unlimited possibilities because that's really what we offer and what most community colleges offer in general. Um, you can come and do the two plus two um, transfer process to get your bachelor's degree. You can do a two year associate degree. We have one year certificates. We have study abroad opportunities. Um, we have many over 100 different majors and you can kind of explore. So you have a lot of flexibility and a lot of options um, when studying with us. Okay. Um, just really quickly, um, I know we talked about community colleges here, but just to kind of put this in perspective, almost half of all high school students in the United States actually begin their studies for their bachelor's degree at a community college. So in the US, community colleges are quite popular. Um, they're not looked down upon or with a negative connotation and people go on to be extremely successful after starting um, their studies at a community college. And in California, um, there's over 115 community colleges across the entire state. So no matter where, um, what kind of location you might want to study in the mountains, in the city, in a suburban area like Foothill and De Anza, you have a lot of options. And it's actually the largest system of public education in the US. A little bit about Foothill and De Anza. These are some of our rankings, but the, the one thing I want to focus on um, the most is our international students. Um, we have over 3,000 international students. That sounds like a lot, um, but it's about a 10% population. So um, we've been hosting international students since we opened. Um, we have a strong tradition of welcoming students from all over the world. In fact, over 85 different countries. So when you're sitting in your class, you're gonna have students from all over the world and American students in your classroom. It's not gonna be just Scandinavian students, not just European students. So you really have an opportunity to um, network and connect and hear different viewpoints from people all over the world. Um, we also are the largest community college district for graduation and transfer 
to the University of California. So if you have an interest in you know, the UC system, and I'll talk more about transfer in a moment, um, we transfer the most international students um, to that system. So why us? And, and some of these things kind of were touched upon um, in the overview earlier, but I mentioned we have over 100 majors and programs. For um, Norwegian students, the most popular are going to be computer science, engineering, film, television, and animation, psychology, economics, and political science. But again, we have everything from art and design to business to the sciences and pretty much everything in between. Um, and so you can really explore what you might be interested in. Our tuition is very affordable as well, um, which was mentioned earlier, um, just over $8,000 per year. And we are on the quarter system here. So that's 10 months of study. Um, admission requirements are very flexible. I'm not gonna go too deep into that, but um, you, you won't, if you've done well in your um, high school in Norway, uh, we will waive the English requirements so you don't have to go out and take TOEFL or IELTS or anything like that. Um, and you know, we, we aren't looking for particular grades, just that you're completing high school um, for us. We have outstanding transfer agreements, which I'll talk about in a moment. But the things I wanna talk about a little bit more in depth here is, you know, it is a full, both campuses are full-fledged campuses. So when you think, okay, I'm going to the US, to study on a campus, that's pretty much what our campuses look like. It's not just a building in the middle of the city. Um, we have athletics, we have um, lo different labs, we have maker space where you can actually go and do 3D printing of different projects. Um, we have even a planetarium on our campus. Uh, so it, it really is a campus feel with clubs, sports, organizations, and things like that. It's a very safe and welcoming environment here too in Silicon Valley. Um, it's one of the safest areas in the entire US. Um, we have, you know, Foothill College is the safest community college campus in the entire state of California. Um, so it's just a very welcoming environment with people from all over the world um, in our area in general. And then classes are very small. So I mentioned we have over 3000 international students. Um, our student population, Foothill is around 12,000, Dianz is around 24,000 students. Sounds huge, but the thing to know is there's lots of things going on, but the classes, um, class average size is 20 to 25 students per class. So you're really getting that individual attention. You are able to do more project-based work, less lectures. Um, and so if you're interested in that, we definitely offer those opportunities. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into what makes California so unique in terms of the transfer process. Um, so as was mentioned earlier, you spend two years on our campus and then two years at the university of your choice. However, we have special agreements with universities, not just in California, but all over the US, even around the world, um, where they accept your credits or even give you guaranteed admission. So in California, there is this thing called the California uh, Master Plan where you have guaranteed admission to six of the University of California campuses, which are UC Davis, UC Irvine, UC Santa Cruz, Santa Barbara, uh, Riverside, and Merced. Okay, I don't remember the, all those, but those are the six. And then you have guaranteed admission if you complete an associate's degree to the California State University campuses. So no matter what, um, even if you don't do as well as you had, had hoped, you are guaranteed a spot at a really great university. Um, and so that's just another benefit that we offer. And this is a little bit more about the transfer agreements. So um, in California, we have the transfer agreements with all the University of California. Now, those aren't necessarily guaranteed. Like for example, Berkeley is not a guaranteed admission school, but all the classes that you take are guaranteed to count towards your bachelor's degree. For example, um, the California State University system, Historically, Black colleges and universities are guaranteed admission as well. And then we have agreements with many other universities across the US, not just in California. And just to give you an idea of our transfer success, because it sounds very abstract, right? Um, so here's some examples here. So these are just um, students that transferred in the fall 2019. And as you can see, you know, it's not one or two students, it's in many cases, hundreds of students transferring to the top University of California campuses. So um, we have many very successful students um, going on to the, their dream school, as was mentioned earlier. Um, but if you're not interested in the University of California, 
maybe you're interested in doing two years in California, two years in New York or Hawaii or Boston or even Canada or back in Europe, those are all possibilities as well. And we have a complete list of the universities where our students have transferred to um, on our website. Okay, so a little bit about, I'm gonna talk about the area and the campuses. So Foothill College is a more chill um, college campus. Uh, it looks like a beautiful park. If you like nature, um, you want somewhere that you feel more relaxed, then Foothill is definitely um, the campus you wanna choose. Both campuses have pretty much the same majors. Um, there's just a couple differences. So Foothill will be stronger in engineering. Um, it's also where you'll find our sports medicine and physical therapy programs, as well as the theater program. Um, we also have an honors program at Foothill College with preferred mission to UCLA. So if UCLA is your dream school and you really would like to go there, um, I recommend Foothill just because if you're in the honors program, you have even a higher chance of getting the transfer admission to UCLA. There's also more European students at Foothill College, so if that's something that you're considering, um, you might want to take a look at Foothill's campus. And then De Anza is the college campus is located in Cupertino. Again, they're only 10 minutes apart, so they're close by, and you can take classes at both campuses. Um, De Anza is much larger. Um, it's in the city center of Cupertino, so you can walk right off campus and go, you know, grab some boba tea or hang out with your friends. Um, the campus itself is a little bit more in the city, like I said. The only difference is here is that it has the journalism program, um, the child development program, but pretty much again, all the other programs are going to be similar. Oh, and the film, television, and animation program is also at Deanza. So if that's something that you want to study, study all the um, studios and everything are at Deanza College. Okay, so why consider, and this Okay, uh, just to back up my personal history, I'm actually from Toronto, Canada, and I discovered, I grew up there, I went, did my undergraduate bachelor's degree in Canada, and I realized I cannot stand the cold. This is really bad for someone who's Canadian, just not, not good. And I actually lived in Hawaii for six years before moving here to California. And I have to say, like, I love Hawaii. It's amazing. It's really great. But I really love the Bay Area um, just because there's so many things to do and it's so easy to get around um, and go explore different places. And there are just so many opportunities here. Um, so we are about 30 to 40 minutes from downtown San Francisco. You have San Jose right in the area. Um, it's just, uh, you have the mountains, you have the ocean, you have the Bay. So there's just so many things to do. And there's so many opportunities for our students as well. Um, so we have internships in OPT, um, which is your, if you want to work after your two years of study, um, if you have an associate's degree, you can actually work for a full year um, anywhere in the US, but many students choose to stay in Silicon Valley. Um, and it's not just engineering and computer science. People always think that just because of our location. Um, we have opportunities in psychology, that's one of my favorite favorite internships. We have an internship at Stanford University in their psychology lab, working with their faculty and graduate students, which is also really cool. Um, but of course, you know, the ones you're thinking, Uber, Apple, um, we have a student right now at Facebook doing an internship. So again, just a lot of options in this area. And then um, just, it's just a top, area for young professionals. So if you, you know, think you might want to stay and get some work experience in the US, it's definitely a really great location to be in. Um, and I mentioned the safety aspect earlier. And then some things that are around here that I think, you know, a lot of our students like to explore, especially when there's breaks or on a weekend. Um, so just our location in relation to some of the famous, like Half Moon Bay Beach was one of the famous beaches in this area, um, Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, um, Muir Woods, which is where you see all the amazing redwood trees, um, Napa Valley is only an hour and a half away from here, um, Lake Tahoe, if you miss the snow, I'm actually heading to the mountains this weekend, um, you can go skiing, cross country or downhill, that's like a famous area for that. Uh, Yosemite is about three and a half hours away from here, and LA is five hours drive or about one hour flight. 
from here. So a lot of students like to go down to LA or Santa Barbara or uh, San Diego on a shorter break. Um, our requirements, I don't want to go into this too deeply, but they're, they're very simple, especially for students from Norway. Um, and Sonor can help you kind of, you know, if you have any questions about this. Um, but basically, if you've done well in your high school, we just need your passport information, your transcripts just uploaded um, to our system. And then we, we absolutely give you your documentation that you need for Lona Kassen which Sonar also will help explain how that works. Um, our tuition and fees, again, very, you know, very reasonable for the US. The total estimated cost is just over 26,000 US dollars a year, um, but that's like the highest amount. Um, we're pretty conservative using the most expensive housing, which is our homestay, which most Norwegian students don't like. <laughs> um, they prefer our student apartments, which are like dormitories with other students. And that is actually less expensive, surprisingly. Um, so that's what mo most Norway Norwegian students like to do. So that was a brief overview. If you have any questions, again, please reach out to Sonar. They're always happy to help and we're happy to partner with them. And if you have your phone, you can always scan this QR code and see more. We have videos, we have more information in our brochures um, about what we offer on our campuses. And definitely follow us on Instagram too to see what the students are up to and the activities that are happening right now um, during COVID time. Um, we're actually remote as of right now. I think we should be back in person, hopefully, we don't know yet, hopefully um, in the fall of 2021. So I hope that you will consider uh, coming to us in California and yeah, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. So now we're moving on to Green River College, moving up north. So yeah, welcome. <laughs> All right, I'm starting with the presentation. Are you guys able to see it? Yep, working just fine. Well, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Yella. Uh, I work for Green River College as the European representative. Uh, I was once an international student myself. Uh, just like Lislot, basically, only I went to Green River. Uh, I was born and raised in Amsterdam. After I graduated high school, I left for the U.S., so I went to Green River College, after which I moved to Southern California, to Santa Barbara, actually, which Jennifer mentioned earlier. Um, and then I, I moved back to Amsterdam, where I'm living at the moment, and uh, I'm sharing my, my personal story uh, and my personal experiences for you guys to find out what you want to do. Well, let me see. Green River College is uh, just on the northwest side of the U.S. We're about 40 minutes south of Seattle in a smaller town called Auburn. Uh, Washington State is called the Evergreen State for a reason. It's always green. Um, there's mountains on one side from the school. There's the city on the other side. We have the, the sauna, so you can go kayaking or other fun activities. So personally, I thought it was a great place to study. Um, here you have a video, like an overview of our campus. Let's see if that works. Um, so a couple of reasons, uh, like Jennifer mentioned, a lot of the, the community colleges offer transfer options to universities within the U.S. And so do we. So we have excellent transfer opportunities within the U.S., but also internationally to, for example, other schools in Europe. We offer on-campus private bedrooms for students to stay in, but more about that a little bit later. A community college show that comes at lower costs, smaller class sizes, and more personal interaction with the students and the professors. And then, of course, we're close to Seattle and we have a very safe and friendly campus. Here you have some photos of our school, our Green River campus. This is the technology center. All the buildings are pretty modern. Um, they're based on a, on a large plot, which also has a forest on it. So if you wanna, during breaks, you wanna go for a little hike in the forest, that is 
with no problem. As you can see, a lot of trees, a lot of green. We really proud of the name. All right, this is our student union. Um, and this is basically the place where students hang out even after class. So the, the concept, I don't know if that's the same in Norway, but here in the Netherlands is you go to school, do your, you know, go to your classes and after which you go home and you meet up with your friends outside of school. But at Green River, it was more of a tradition to, you know, after class, everybody would just go to the student union. Everybody would hang out there. We, there's fun activities to do, or they would go and work out together in the rec or recreational athletic center we have. So they go to the gym or they do a sports class or something fun with their friends on campus. At Green River, we offer several programs. So the most popular one would be our two plus two program, meaning you'll be doing two years with us and then two more years at another university for your four year bachelor's degree. We do offer intensive English course, uh, program courses, uh, high school completion, various degrees and certificates, seven bachelors ourselves, and we have a gap year program. For the two plus two, we've sent students all over the United States, but also to other continents like Europe, for example. Um, in the list, you can see great schools like uh, Georgia Tech, Columbia, Stanford, all the big names. And we actually have transfer agreements with certain schools, meaning that we can guarantee acceptance after two years um, if you meet certain criteria. Of course, there's, all, there's other schools that we don't have an agreement with, uh, and we definitely encourage you to you know, apply for those schools, but we can just never guarantee you'll be accepted. This is, for example, well, I'm choosing some, a Dutch guy as this is very close to my heart. Uh, I actually went to school with, with Remco myself, so he started off uh, at the same time, uh, did his associate's degree at Green River, after which he finished his bachelor's in Oxford and is now doing his master's in Yale. So he basically went all the way. I started off at Green River, a relatively smaller school, but ended up in, at the larger, the big universities and having such a you know, great degree. And he's still in touch with every one of us. So that's, that's really nice. Another story would be Gresh. He was from London originally. He started off at Green River, got his associates there, and then he transferred to University College Roosevelt, located in the Netherlands. So he, he started in Europe, went to the US, and actually came back to finish his bachelor's degree. So there's a lot of opportunities uh, for you guys to, to start off at Green River and then go anywhere uh, where you might want to end up. Um, like I said, various degrees and certificates, most students will just get their associate's degree at Green River but we do offer seven bachelors ourselves. Um, they're mostly in the uh, computer sciences, so IT network and administration, IT software development, those are big ones. Also aeronautical sciences, as we have Boeing just around the corner, and that's a, a big hit at Green River. And natural resource and forest resource management is also very popular among Europeans at Green River because of our location. Very briefly, our gap year program. Uh, we have the traditional Green River gap year, meaning you study just at Green River for one year uh, to have a, a fun international experience. But within the same year, we also have options for you to transfer to California, Hawaii, or Australia, New Zealand, all within the same year. So do a double program. Uh, and if you're interested in that, this is unfortunately not funded by the Norwegian government. Um, but you could compare it to, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly, but the, the Folk Hogeskola in, in Norway you guys have, it's very similar to that. It's a very fun year. You meet a lot of new people, you learn a lot. It's a cultural experience and you just have a lot of fun. At Green River, we have two main housing options. Uh, the most popular one among European students would be our on-campus housing. It's a five minute walk to every classroom. You actually have private bedrooms, which is fairly unique in the US. Uh, at an affordable rate, so that's very convenient. And we recently renovated all the apartments, so if you guys would end up going, you'll be ending up in a, a brand new apartment. Another option, if you want to go for more of a, a U.S. cultural experience, I would recommend the host family. Uh, you'll be living with an American family, uh, American traditions, like Thanksgiving is coming up. Um, so that's a really fun experience as well, and if you want to combine both of them within your studies at Green River, that's also an option. There's a lot of fun activities at Green River. Our student life department is really focused on giving students the opportunity to explore the Pacific Northwest, meet, hanging out with other students, meeting new students, and 
learning more about other cultures. So there could be an overnight camping trip like you see here. I think every year about 250 students attend. Uh, another option would be our trip to Seattle where everybody's going to Pike's Place Market, visit the first Starbucks that ever opened, uh, going up to Space Need, all those fun events uh, are all within, uh, within an hour reach from uh, Green River College. Going to finances, um, we're a little bit, our tuition is a little bit more expensive than Fudil and Dianza. It's about 10,000 US dollars per year. But as we're not in the major city, but just a little bit south of it, our living expenses are quite low. Therefore, the estimate for the a full academic year would be 21,000 US dollars. Um, if you decide to find your own apartment, live with a couple of friends, that might be a little bit more expensive. So these uh, prices are based on living on campus and, and based on 15 credits, if I say correctly. Just to get a little bit into why should you go to a community college before going to university? Um, if you end up, for example, going to University of Michigan right away for your four-year bachelor's degree, you'll be paying $46,500 a year tuition. Adding that up times four is, is a huge amount of money. Whereas if you start off at a community college, whether that's Foothill de Anza, Green River College, or one of the other ones, um, you'll be paying about $10,000 on a yearly basis for the first two years. And then the final two years, you'd be paying the amount of the university you want to graduate from. In the end, your degree would still say, if you, for example, start off at Green River and then go to Michigan, your degree would still say uh, Bachelor of Science, University of Michigan, only you'll be saving about $60,000, $70,000 in total, which is, of course, a huge amount of money. If there's any questions, I'll get to that later, but I have some more photos of my personal time in the US, uh, just to see what I did while I was a student there. This is about seven years ago. Um, the first photo was in, I, I think it was the first weekend I was up there. I went all the way up to Mount Rainier, one of the mountains that's about a, a 40 minute drive from our school. Uh, you can hike up a glacier and it was a pretty windy, snowy day. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. And then, of course, on the other hand, you see uh, me in California after I left Green River. Um, an overview of my, I actually stayed with the host family myself for the first uh, year. So on the center page, uh, the top, yeah, the top center photo is me and my host mom and dad. Um, I personally like that a lot to learn more about the American culture. That was why I chose the United States and, and not Australia or another country. Um, baseball game, could it be more traditional? It was a lot of fun. And, and those activities make your experience unique. Um, on the bottom right hand side, you see me and a group of friends. We went to Seattle to public market and we just had a fun day scrolling around Seattle and you know, doing all the, the classic touristy things, but that's what you know, makes a, a, a memory, I think. Some more um, on the top right corner, me welding. I, had, uh, I was studying liberal arts basically and I had some credits left and I thought, you know, why shouldn't I try out welding? Um, never used it ever since, but it was a really fun experience. Had a great professor, really, really took the best out of me and it was just a lot of fun. Uh, so this is my memory and of a fun class you can take at Green River and this also shows the variety of classes we do offer. Um, another fun shot, Canada is just around the corner. So in the middle, you see me skiing in Whistler, which is about a seven hour drive uh, from where we're located. So if you're down to go up into the mountains, that's definitely a, a weekend trip opportunity. And then of course, the final shot of that beautiful view, Mount Rainier. So thank you very much. And uh, let me get back to that. Thanks. Um, all right. So I think it's time for our q and I received a couple of questions privately, but you guys feel free to write them either to me or just to everyone. So the first question is, can I work while studying? Shall I, Yennefer, you want to do it or it's the same for both of us? Yeah. Um, so you can work on campus up to 20 hours per week. So you can get an on-campus job. Um, you know, most college campuses have a lot of jobs um, available and it might be working with the professor. Our office hires international students. It could be working in the library, things like that. 
Um, if you want to work off campus, like for example, an internship, it has to be related to your major um, and you have to get permission um, to do so. So you would go to the international student offices um, and get permission, but you have to do it after your first um, academic year. So typically after nine or 10 months, depending on the college, you can be eligible for um, off-campus work um, through internship and things like that. Do you have anything to add to that, Taylor? No, that's about it. I mean, jobs could be, uh, I actually was hired at Green River as a photographer as that was one of my hobbies. And, and while exploring the Pacific Northwest, Green River wanted to use my photos on their social media. So that was actually a paid job for me, which was a lot of fun. Other students that love to tutor, help other students if they're, you know, outstanding in maths or whatever. So I think every school is very flexible with finding job opportunities for you as a student. Um, and a minimum wage in the U.S. is, is pretty reasonable, I'd say. So if you work, you know, three days or two days a week, um, it's, a, it's a nice extra bit of pocket money for fun trips or, you know, to fund your, your housing or food or whatever. So I would definitely recommend uh, getting a job while on campus. Um, yeah, I actually and, had two jobs myself while I was studying, um, doing my undergrad. Yeah. I, I worked at, um, it was called, oh gosh, I, I, I totally blanked out on the name. <laughs> um, but it was basically an office for internships and community work, basically. So like that kind of thing. And I also worked in the international office helping students get to the U.S. actually from, well, to my college, I guess, yes. So it is possible as long as you're kind of open and yes, that's cool. Yeah, I would say too, like uh, the nice thing about on-campus jobs is like Yale said, you know, um, we're really flexible. And so it goes around your class schedule. You don't have to worry about, you know, um, having work scheduled when you have classes or, you know, we're really flexible when you have an exam coming up you know, we give students a bit of a break. So on-campus work is, is a nice option. Definitely. So, I want, oh, sorry, I just want to add, if you, you can of course get a job, a paid job on campus, uh, but a lot, of, a lot of our students also do some volunteering in the area. So they work with uh, some, uh, whatever the disabled people or they help with homeless people or they, they do a trust f a funding kind of activity. And, and there's a lot of opportunities to do that as well on site. So um do something for the community and that's always uh you know a very positive mindset to most for most students i remember the name now center for community engagement <laughs> yes that's what i was working with <laughs> anyways <laughs> that was cool um so second question can i change my major if i don't end up liking what i'm studying yes you can um the fun thing in the u.s the, you won't Sorry, let me start over. Basically, the way it works is you, 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 you have general education and you have your major. Um, so if you're not really sure whether you want to study psychology or criminology or whatever, um, you can start off study, focusing on one, taking more of the general courses at the beginning, and then make up your mind and then still change your uh, major uh, later onwards. Um, at some point, of course, you basically, there's some requirements for every major for certain classes you have to, you know, pass uh if you've completed those then it's harder to change it but that could be in the, done in the, the final stages of your of your study so let's say the final two years yeah um, i mean we even have and i'm sure you do too um Yale, um have students um changing their major even when they transfer so we have students studying business so they're taking some business courses with their general ed um, with us on our campus and then when they transfer they transfer into math for example or economics so closely related majors too, you can change um, even at the point of transfer after two years of studying. So it is very flexible. As long as you're not trying to do something from like music to engineering, that might add some time onto your studies. But generally speaking, yes, it's, it's very flexible and you're able to explore. Um, so third question, where do students usually go during spring break? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm... What was that? Is Jennifer going or shall I, shall oh. I go? It depends. <laughs> I remember it depends for, for the students. Some students, 
you know, spring break, there's still a lot of snow in Canada. They love to go up into the mountains and go downhill skiing or, or something like that. We have students that go home. Uh, we have students that go to Southern California or even to Florida or, or Mexico. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities. You can go basically anywhere you want uh, as long as it's, you know, fits within the, the guidelines, I'd say. Yeah, time frame. Yeah, I agree. I think a lot of our students head to like Yosemite or LA, San Diego, Hawaii. They take the flight over there. Um, but yeah, it, it's similar, you know, all over the place. Some do go home as well. So it's up to you what you want to do within your free time. Um, so last question, unless we receive some else. Um, so uh, I actually, let me see, I'll just do one of these that are public. Um, so it was mentioned by Jennifer that you could keep studying in Canada. How does that work? Is it the same that you, same way that you would transfer into an American school? Or how does that work? Yeah, so it depends on the university um, that you want to transfer to. Um, but we do have articulation agreements with some Canadian uh, universities. So if it happens to be one of those, um, like McGill University, for example, um, it's very similar to American universities. Um, some of the others, like UBC um, and University of Toronto, which is where I went <laughs> for my undergrad. So I get excited when students want to go back there. Um, basically, you meet with our counselors um, and kind of um, discuss that you are interested in going to Canada and they kind of outline the courses that you should take in order to make that as seamless as possible. If you decide at the last minute, oh, hmm, you know, I've applied to Berkeley, I've applied to, I don't know, Michigan, NYU, maybe University of Washington, oh, and I'd like to apply also to UBC. Um, the thing is, depending on your major, you may have to take some extra classes um, because it gets a little different. But in general, if you have a bit of a plan, maybe a, even a year into your studies, um, it is pretty seamless. Um, although we don't have guaranteed admission um, to those universities, um, we do have articulation agreements. So your, your courses count towards your bachelor's degree. I know that was like long winded, but we have a lot of students um, going to Canada now. Um, so the counselors are really well versed and they help you out kind of making sure you're on the right path. So Yella, how does that work with Green River? It would just depend on what school you want to transfer to that we have to, you know, make sure uh, the credits are transferable if they would be accepted at the school you transfer to. Um, so that you, normally I'd say that would be a one on one case. We have some Canadian schools we have a uh, transfer agreement with meaning that if you meet certain criteria, let's say you need a 3.0 GPA and you need to write uh, you know, an essay or whatever, you'll have guaranteed acceptance. That uh, is still an option as well, but that's of course a limited number of schools in Canada. Cool. Um, so last question, unless anything else shows up. So how do you make friends? How do you stay connected? How do, do you have any clubs or anything like that? I think that's what they mean. Yeah, I think that's where it's going. And there's several options to stay connected. Uh, most people make their, their the first friends basically in their orientation week. We put everybody in one big group. We have a fun activity. Uh, that's where you meet other students that are, you know, new students, freshman students as well. Um, and then you can decide whether you want to join sports teams. There's various clubs and organizations at Green River, and I'm sure Dianza, Furi Alianza has them as well. Uh, so there's the European club, there's a soccer team, there is uh, baseball games you can attend, and we have student life activities. So we arrange, for example, a hike to Mount Rainier on a Saturday, which you and your friends can attend, and, and Green River arranges transportation and lunch and every everything else you might need. Yeah, very, very similar. Um, instead of baseball, we have, you know, we have a take our students to um, uh, Monterey Bay, to the aquarium, to Santa Cruz, to um, Berkeley for a tour and like an American football, which I still don't understand, but it's something, it's a new experience, I guess. Um, we also have an intern or um, internship, a mentorship program. So if, you know, mentorship. it's not mandatory. Mm -hmm. So if a new student is coming and want to like connect with a student who's been on campus already for some time, 
um, you can do that like even when you're back in Norway, you can start talking. Um, and then when you come, you have some students that have been around can kind of show you, okay, this is where you can go hang out or this is where you can get like good groceries for a good price or these are the best restaurants. So in addition to all that, there's the option of um, opting into the mentorship program too. So I believe that was the last sec last question of the night, if I'm not mistaken. Um, thank you all for participating. I really appreciate your time and effort. And thank you all for watching. And you can email us directly and we'll send out some email with their contact information tomorrow. And have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks everybody for joining. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.